Hi, this is Natalie Kolbeck, and I'm here with my dear friend, Jimmy Leslie. Yeah. He's also here in uh, New Jersey, not in Jersey yep. City, sorry, almost flunked here. <laughs> not, not in your place. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Yeah. So I've known Jimmy, um, we tried to figure it out for, um, <laughs> we still haven't, I think like maybe <laughs> like eight years or... Something Let's around say. that. Um, so Jimmy um, is an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. He does wonderful um, paintings. He does mixed media collage and also uh, sketches. So he does yeah. portraits, uh, landscape, you're, like <laughs> a lot of things actually, but it's very consistent in each of the things that you do. Oh, and okay. they're uh, very amazing. I especially love his sketches and his um, self-portraits. He does a lot yeah. of self-portraits. <laughs> and he is a resident, artist in residence, actually a real one. <laughs> yeah, but it's a weird title though, because no one ever really understands what it means. They think it's a temporary. See, my, so maybe I should, should I explain yeah. it? Yeah. I'll explain it. Okay. so. So I work for an art materials company um, that the, the brands Windsor and Newton and Liquitex. And so I am, I'm their resident artist. But a lot of times when people hear resident artist, they think it's like a, you know, you're going somewhere to work for a short period of time, a month or more or something like that. And no, it's a full time job. Um, so I'm the resident artist and then I'm their director of education for, for their education program, uh, which is called the Fine Art Collective. So, yeah. Resident artist is a little bit of a misnomer, um, but I have enough work that I do feel like I live there sometimes. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, do you live there? <laughs> yeah, I feel, sometimes I feel like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm an early riser, so I'm usually into work. Well, now I mean I'm I'm home with everything going on right now. But uh, if I'm at work, I'm I'm normally in there around 7 a.m. So I'm the first person, you know, well, we're one of the first people in the door and uh, it, it, it's quiet then. You can get a lot done in the early mornings. So um, I will come back to that right away. Okay. But um, so I know Jimmy because he was when he was working or he's still working there. Yeah. But he was at a, a trade show, I think a trade yeah. show or whatever show yeah. in uh, Germany. I think it was Paper Arts. Um, yes. Frankfurt. Uh, Right, in Frankfurt. And um, I've known him, I've followed him kind of <laughs> almost stalking, but it was because I love, I know it sounds so weird, but it was, um, it was just like, because I have always been so into knowing uh, arts materials. I'm always mm. so fascinated. And because I'm a self-taught artist, you know, yeah. it was always very important for me to get some knowledge about art material. What can you do with it? And so at some point I stumbled over some of your videos uh, for Liquitex okay. because I do mostly acrylic paints. And so I, I've known you. And then one time I was there many years <laughs> ago uh, working f with a company at a, at a booth and I look over and there's this dude from the video. It's <laughs> like right across from me painting big portraits. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, this is Jimmy Leslie. Yeah. And so I walked over to you you did. And I um, introduced myself as your stalker. And then it turned out I was going to uh, move to Crazy. the States and you asked me where to. Yes. And I said, New Jersey. I was like, what? Like, yeah. I'm in New Jersey. <laughs> like, like, where in New Jersey? And then you said, Jersey City. And I said, oh my gosh, our offices are in Piscataway. And that, that's crazy. Because <laughs> when you said, it was funny, when you came over, I remember this pretty clearly. <laughs> And you, you were very friendly and I, and I'm a, I'm not an introvert, but mm -hmm. I'm also not, I, I, I always say this to people and they find it a little weird. If, if you told me I had to speak to a group of a hundred people right now, that wouldn't really bother me. Mm -hmm. now, that's not to say I might not get a little nervous beforehand. That's just, that's human nature. Right. But, but you know, that wouldn't freeze me up. I'd be like, okay, well, you know, whatever, I'll prepare a little bit and then I'll just go do it. If you told me I had to go to a dinner party with six people I don't know, Oof. oh, and so, you know, you, you approached me and I, you know, I don't know that I would have done it in the same way. Like you were just very carefree about it and like, hey, hey, you know, and I would have been very nervous about approaching somebody in a setting like that. And you were just out there. And it's funny because when you said like, oh, I'm moving to the United States and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. The United States is huge. Like, <laughs> 
you know, I'm thinking like you're going to be, you know, out in Oregon somewhere. Yeah, when you said you were in New Jersey and where you were, I was like, wow, that's, that's <laughs> all right, that's cool. We got to we, we gotta get together, yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty funny. And um, so for anyone ever asked me before, because I was asked before, how did I end up being a Liquitex ambassador? Yeah. Maybe that will be the intro yeah, yeah. to that. So. Yeah, that was a funny <laughs> meeting. That was great. It was really, it's really odd when something like that comes together. Right. You're which, like, which is what I always, you know, I talked to you about this before. I always say the art world is very small, you know, because, it, you know, and it's easy to say now, obviously, with technology. I mean, you and I aren't far apart geographically right now, but with technology, it's so amazing how we can close the gap and we're really, a, you know, a global world. But even more so within that, the art world is so tiny. You, you know, you like I always say you can. I could walk around my neighborhood right now and everybody I meet, if I, if I went walking for two hours and said, what do you do? I, I'm probably not going to find that anybody's an artist. And so you, you have, when you connect with people, you, you need to treat people right um, to, to make that connection because you don't know what's going to happen later on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I feel like that is um, exactly what you're have always uh, incorporated. Like you're not only preaching that, uh you know you actually do that you're a very uh jimmy jimmy is like one of the most kindest most oh. like uh supporting artists and you know you you've been a teacher mentor yes. whenever there's a question you will be there so um you're you're just like a real good guy uh, oh, and you okay. lift that. You lift that but, saying, you know, we got to yeah, reach but, out. But that really comes to, I mean, you know, I, obviously there's the old, you know, treat people how you want to be treated yourself. Mm. But I, I always, I think part of that for me, though, really goes back to being a kid in, in grade school. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because I, I was, I was, uh, again, not an introvert, but I was not, and, and I, I was a bit shy, but not... Mm -hmm. It's weird because I do so many things now publicly and I've taught and there's a lot of speaking I have to do for my job and, and, and I don't have an issue with that at all with public speaking and people, oh, you're being silly when you say you're shy. You're being, you know, you're just saying that for effect. I'm like, no, I really, as a, especially as a kid, I did not like social situations where I was out there. And, and so the ultimate being out there was not understanding something in a class and having to ask a question. So to me, I kind of took that later on with teaching and anytime I deal with artists, if they have a question, it's cool. Just, just throw it out there. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, people always, oh, I don't, you know, this is a dumb question probably. I don't worry about it. I don't, I don't care. I don't care if it's a dumb question. I, I would tell my students uh, when I was teaching, I said, listen, if anybody asks a dumb question in class, uh, that's okay. We'll make fun of everybody else who makes fun of you for asking it. <laughs> and that kind of, you know, it was a funny way to just set the mood like it, it's okay. Say what you need to say. Yeah, I think um, I think art is um, so loaded oftentimes with, you know, um, there's some part of it is like this fear of people are snobby if you ask the wrong sure. questions or you reveal that you don't know anything Mm -hmm. Or you don't know how to read art besides maybe you don't do the art right. So there's mm -hmm. a, a lot of, I think, especially fine art where people are scared, you know, that sure. uh, if I ask a question or if I show that I don't have the knowledge or that I'm still striving to For because sure. you never stop learning. Like you're never, um, you know, you're never there. There is no there. There's always a... Like... But, but that's so nah, That's so universal that you're right, because somebody could use the wrong term, but it's so universal. I'm going to admit something here. It's like, now I have I have somebody who, who works on our vehicles now who I know, and it's, it's fine, I, I trust, and it's like, I can drop it off and I don't worry about it. But prior to that, you know, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a mechanical, I'm not really a mechanical guy. I wish I was. But I would, all, <laughs> I might, I might go to a, a, a mechanic and be like, I, I just didn't have time to get into there, so I was, I thought I'd bring it to you. <laughs> I think it's this, you know. What I, instead, of, <laughs> instead of just saying, you know what, I, I don't have a clue. Like I was never going to get under there and fix this thing. <laughs> like, there, was, there was no chance that this was going to happen, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> it's like, let, let me pretend for a moment that I just don't have the time. <laughs> <you know? laughs> 
So, but but you're right. It's it, it's that thing you're afraid to admit what you don't know, and that'll reveal something. And I I think that's just insecurities. Yeah. I mean, even the most secure people have they have to have some insecurity. Right. You know, and and you get in that setting, and and uh, and yeah, people are, are you know afraid to say the wrong thing, as if you'll be judged. And I, and I don't know. Maybe maybe you will by certain people. Um, but, but then they are not your people. Not your people, not your yeah, tribe. Yeah, exactly. You find somebody else. Exactly. So yeah. coming back to what you said, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk, I mean, there's many things I want to talk to you about, but today yeah. okay. is um, <laughs> about how was your life? And you just hinted that before you said you're at work at like 7 a.m. in the morning, early yeah. riser. So what was a typical Jimmy artist in residence and artist like yeah. meaning you're paying you don't do everything you do that's art wise for the company I mean you have your own like art that you do sure. what was a typical how would that work out uh, for you before the crisis oh before um yeah so I I don't know it's 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 a bit different now so I get I guess I'm an early riser yes but not so much by choice, I, I don't sleep well. Um, just not, I'm not a great sleeper. I struggle. Um, I can be up in the middle of the night for an hour. And um, so a lot of times, you know, if it would finally, and I, I'm normally up at around 5 a.m., 5.15, something like that. I'll work out. I'll get a shower, eat a little bit, go to work, be there by 7. And I like to do that because I, I do like the quiet time. Mm. Um, I, I, there's something about the morning that's peaceful. It's quiet. I can get more done in two hours than 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 any time the rest of the day. And I guess um, it, you know, I guess the thing is, if I don't sleep well at night and the clock's ticking in the morning, sometimes I might just get up at four. I might get up at four thirty. You know, whatever it is. And so my typical day would be getting into work, and I would. Even if I'm here home now, I'll start the day with a sketch. Almost, almost every day, I open up the sketchbook, and and I don't. I want to be clear about this. I'll, I'll probably average a page or so a day uh, across the whole year, but I don't want anybody who might listen to this, you know, then again judge themselves like, oh, I wish I did that. I don't do that every day. No, there's days I miss. There's days I don't. There's days I fill ten pages. I mean, it, it's there's an ebb and flow, and that's okay. After that, my day is not typical. If if all this madness now wasn't going on, um, I can I can be working on an actual art project for the company where I'm creating art for uh, educational content. I'm creating it for a wall at a trade show. I'm creating it for a brochure. I mean, you name it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really nice to be in a job where I do get to create art. On the flip side, I could be in a budget meeting. Mm -hmm. um, followed by a marketing meeting, followed by some other meeting, and a meeting, 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 and that's my whole day. Um, now that I'm home, I'm sleeping a little bit better, um, and I think that's only because if I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep for a bit, I'm not stressing about it because I could just get up a little bit later, and uh, my day is a little bit more fluid. Um, I find I'm probably working just as much because I'm I'm connecting with artists uh, across the country and across mm -hmm. the world with a lot of content that we're doing for uh, our Instagram feed for our education program, uh, and that keeps me quite busy uh, and it's different. But uh, then again, I'm finding too that I'm I'm getting a lot more of my own work done right now mm -hmm. just because my hours are flexible throughout the day. And you don't have the commute. You have a pretty long no. commute usually, right? Uh, yeah, it's like 45 minutes each way. So, you know, an hour and a half, that's like you have a free hour and a half now yeah. of the day. I mean, that's like, you know, I, it's it's the thing I've been chatting with a bunch of artists lately uh, since all this has happened. It's like you want to have more time in your studio to do your work. But I think it's hard when it's dictated by what's going on now. Mm -hmm. You know, because I just think that's... You know, you, you, if somebody's watching, I mean, that's kind of a, you know, if somebody's watching this and thinking like, oh, yeah, no, I have all this time too, but I'm just not getting anything done, mm -hmm. and they're down on themselves, don't don't beat yourself up so much. I mean, I, I think it's a lot to, to deal with. Everything that's happening right now, the worry people have over their jobs, their income, health, health of older family members, or even younger, right? It doesn't, I mean, we found out it really doesn't matter, right? Right. Uh, they, they, everybody's affected. Everybody's possibly affected. So, um, you know, I think a lot of artists have to be in a particular place to be mm -hmm. able to create. It, it's 
I don't know if you want to call it a safe place. That's a little, that's a little, uh, mm -hmm. little hippy dippy for me, but you, but, but you have to be in your, whatever your comfort zone and place is to create. And I don't necessarily think that's easy right now. I agree. And I think, um, I read, uh, I was actually having a real creative, uh, low, um, mm. which was kind of awkward because, you know, I work from home anyway, so there's not yeah. a lot of change in my daily, uh, let's say work, Uh, wise like I didn't have to adjust of all of a sudden working from mm -hmm. home and all that stuff and my partner my husband works from home too so you know in our life daily life nothing really changed besides right. after work um, so sure. it's like okay you don't go out you don't go you know grocery shopping and um, uh, taking my bike around the neighborhood and to the park that's That's part of my, you know, social sure. life, you know. And sure. So that's gone. But somehow, you know, yeah, it was the, it was taking up a lot of uh, headspace for me to grapple with this whole situation. And also, I think a lot, a lot of artists are very, um, um, most people are, you know, em emphatic and, and think about other people and worry. Um, but I read this really uh, amazing quote, which of course now right away I can't uh, pull off. That's, <laughs> That's typical, how that goes. <laughs> right? Um, but it was something about that um, no feeling is fi final. It's by Maria um, Raina Maria Rilke, and it, was, it says like no feeling is final. Uh, you have to go through the beauty and the terror, and just feel it, and just you know, you once when you do that, basically it says yeah. then you. Um, you get over it, you get through that. And yeah. I thought it was, uh, I, it struck me really hard. And I was like, yeah, it's okay to acknowledge that right now I just don't have that headspace to, it's not about like the usual, like, oh, I get up at seven and I do my thing. And, you know, that's a different problem right, right. that every artist no, has to have. It, it is, and it's, and it's, it, you know, you bring up a good point because it, I, I'm glad you said that your your headspace and where you're at. Because some people, I think, respond to crises or whether they be political, soci, uh, you know, sociological, whatever it is, and they make art about that. And I, I've never really done that. That's been a very, you know, maybe accidentally I've stumbled on things before, but I don't. I don't respond to what's going on in the world. Um, I admire people who do. Mm -hmm. It, but there's a I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll pull up a quote here that I'm going to paraphrase because it's not totally it's not totally right. But it's uh, but it, the big paraphrase here. But it was Matisse. And he said something about uh, he wanted art to feel like a like a comfortable armchair, something that you could relax and, and be comfortable in. You know, and I read that as there's enough garbage in the world. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to delve into more of it. Um, right. And, and again, that's not to knock anybody who does that. I, 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 I admire you. If that's, yeah. your, that's your mission, if that's your thing, it's like, I mean, you think about, forget visual arts, just think about music. Right. Um, how much music of, of the 60s dealt with with uh, with uh, political and, and racial issues. And that's wonderful stuff. I mean, right. people rallied around that. So, uh, but it's just not, it's just not me. Right. Um, so what goes on here doesn't fuel me. I still just want to make colorful Uh, pictures, and I've always said I find I find it hard enough just to make good art anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I have to try to change the world with a message, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> I'm not your man. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a tall order, Nat. <laughs> but that's an interesting uh, point, and I feel I feel I'm the same. I had this like moment of oh my god, everything that I do, do is just so trivial trivial and mundane but then but then then i was like well that's okay too it's just yeah. not i just don't have the the need like that voice that's not yeah. mine that's someone that's a friend of mine who's an artist who has that sure. voice and who does that and he does that way better than i could ever you know yeah. transport that message or thinking Yeah, I think um, you're not being you then. If you're try, I, I think if you try to have that voice when it's not natural to you, then it doesn't come across as genuine. And and I feel like I can't even think of. I'd have to be in my studio digging through piles of old work because I know once in a while I've touched upon things, but but then I looked at it, you know, a month later or after whatever it was that passed, and I just felt like. Ah, it's this weird anomaly. It, it's not part of the whole body of work and there's no consistency with anything else I do. 
that it just feels like this strange thing. And, and you know what? I, I would say to anybody who is, who is, um, I don't know, maybe not as far along in their art careers as, as you and I, and had some miles behind them, like we have that that if they're trying to find their voice, you know, that's okay too. If you mm. have these weird little anomalies, if, if I think you'll learn something from everything you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe you learn that that's not my voice. That's yeah. not what I do. Yeah. No has problem. your subject matter, like, is, has it been consistent? So you do a lot of landscapes too, but now, I mean, you're uh, not well, really. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I started in, in graduate school. I was a figurative artist, um, totally figurative artist in the classical sense. I went to the New York Academy of Art and we really studied everything hardcore, like the old academies. And I guess I found that working in that very classical manner, I, I didn't enjoy it. That, that's what I found after two years mm-hmm. of grad school. I, well, I shouldn't say I found it then. I still stuck with that for a while. And then I just found that I didn't enjoy pushing realism to that degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I respond more when I look at paintings and, and in my own when, when this happens, and I'm, I'm forever struggling to do this is how do I make a representational image, but but do it with just enough information to get the point across. I, I, I love when I look at a painting and it's just full of abstract marks um, and they didn't feel they had to fix and tighten and, mm-hmm. and render because I, I feel like that's what I got out of grad school is we learned to render so much mm-hmm. that I felt it was easy for people to look at the work And I say this, people who maybe, I don't know, I don't know if this is the right term, but not so art savvy, maybe. Mm -hmm. And they look at the work and they simply say, well, that looks like, you know, that person or that looks like, you know, this this cup of Mm -hmm. tea. So it must be good just Mm -hmm. because it simply looks like something. Eh, You can learn to mimic and make it look like something and it still not be art. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, I think you have to have your voice there. And I and I felt like I was just mimicking um, through grad school and after grad school. So yeah, again, I admire, I admire more in my own work when it happens, um, or or when I see it in anyone else's, just this, this line between abstraction and and realism. And I'm, I feel like I'm forever seeking that and I'm not even close. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, you know, uh, I don't know. I'd like to, if I make it to like 90, I'd love to be like, I did it (laughs) because it's weird. It's like you, you, you know, it's hard because you see so much out there these days. We're so inundated with mm. information um, about what other artists are doing. And oh, that can be hard to keep you on track, too, when you see so many different styles and approaches. What I love, um, so you have been posting a lot of time lapses recently, mm. too, which I, I absolutely love. And it's so fascinating yeah. to watch. So um, I will post uh, at the end where people can find you on yeah. Instagram. Um, but you did one um, and it was um, it was a portrait of yourself. And yeah. um, I think it was the one where your daughter is cutting your hair. Yes. It might have been that you have to tell me, but uh, yeah. I think you said that this one was a hard one. Like um, you were, yeah. you were, you had the feeling you were fighting with the. Oh no! Okay, so you're the, you're you're yeah, you're kind of right. There was one with my uh, my daughter cutting my hair because that's that's what happens now. She did a good job. <laughs> Can't get to a barber shop. She did. She did right yeah um no there was a uh it wasn't that though it was like the day or before or after and i was uh i was working on a little self-portrait i i you know i i went to grad school and worked solely in oils and now i work in oil i work in acrylic i work in watercolor i work in a lot of different things but i really haven't worked with oil in quite a while Mm. and um and if this was last Saturday, so I mean, which which uh, maybe isn't necessarily going to ring true for anybody, depending on when they watch this. But this was this was within the past week, and it was a Saturday, and the day before, I had been so busy with other things, I didn't get in there to do what I wanted to do. I was doing things for work specific, mm-hmm. so I said I'm going to get in there, and I just said to myself, and I'll do this a lot. I gave myself an hour time limit, and it was only a little tiny you know, five by seven canvas, but I said one hour, that's it. And I, I always find that a good, a good thing to do because with the time limit, you're, you can't fuss around mm-hmm. or, or if you do, you'll, you won't get anything done. 
Um, so you have to make quick decisions. You have to do that. And my, my, yeah, in the post I said, I think I said that, um, I, I felt like this was uh, a fight that I lost, but I got in a few good punches. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> So it was, you know, it, part of it was I, I hadn't been painting in oil for a while. And there's always an adjustment, I, I, I feel a little bit, for me anyway, between watercolor and, and oil and acrylic, just how you handle different media. And, um, yeah, and it was also just a mood. I had a little bit of an attitude when I went in there that day. I was a little cranky, and I kind of put on the music, and I just wanted to – I was really hacking at the canvas. And um, – but it felt good, you know. That, and and I posted that, and it was. Um, I, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a great painting or anything. And I'm not. I'm not saying that for false modesty. It's just. It's not that great. But uh, I think you and I were talking about this previously. Is that just? I think it's important to not uh, hide that stuff. Um, cause Especially just, as a teacher, right? If yeah. you Also teach like then also teach that there are these faces and they are normal as an artist. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, listen, I, you know, if you, as an artist, if you want to make yourself seem all great on, on social media, you know what you could do? You could work on a painting for five hours uh, and then post that it took 40, there was 45 minutes <laughs> uh, and that you do one every day when really you just posted old stuff every day that, that you know, right. done weeks before. And then people viewing that go, wow, you know, he does that every day and look how fast they pay and wow, they're all good. No, they're not. They're not all good. Most of them are, are, I mean, most, I don't want to say that, that would be a bad proposition, but, but things don't always work out. There's a lot more things I think that don't work than do work. Right. So I, I try to, you know, and most of what I post on the, my Instagram feed is, is mostly daily sketches. There, there's finished work in there for sure. Um, but I just, I just love the daily process of, uh, I, I feel like when I'm doing a sketch, if I don't get to anything else that day or anything, if you want to call it so-called more mm -hmm. important work, I still, I still have that, you know, right. it's, 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 it's always been my daily exercise and it's, and it's sort of, it just feels good. And I, I, even a few years ago, I think it was like three, four years ago, I had very briefly toyed around with the idea. Could I just work in a sketchbook for the rest of my life? Like, what if I only worked in a sketchbook? And? Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I guess part of it was, um, a few things. Um, it pretty hard to sell work if you're just working in a sketchbook. Um, and I, and I'm a fortunate person that I, I, I make my living from my job, uh, working as an artist. So I, I, you know, I don't have to, you know, I sell, I sell work during the year, but when I do sell that work, it's, it's like found money, which mm -hmm. is nice. And that, that's a different luxury than, than somebody who is selling their work. And if they don't, mm -hmm. they're not eating or they're not, you know, they don't have the roof over their head. So I feel, I feel very, very fortunate in that respect. And I can, I can do that, but you still want to sell, I still want to sell work and I still want to enjoy that. And, um, I, I've had sketches that people have reached out to me and they're like, oh, how much? not not knowing it wasn't, a, you know, a large yeah. piece or something. And so oh, can I buy that? I'm like, oh, I don't want to tear that out of my sketchbook. I'm like, they're, they're mine. You know, they're they're more personal to me than than the paintings, um, which might seem odd because you spend more time working on paintings. But I mean, you do so much with journaling. I mean, my my sketchbooks are my they're my visual diaries. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's like for me, it's um. It's uh, a way to also start. I mean, I do a lot of administrative stuff too, and and yeah. so as you, not every day I actually get to to make work. But the art journal kind of helps me to get like a blank canvas and also like over the blank canvas fear or whatever you know, like it gives you the start for me to actually then concentrate on mm -hmm. the painting on canvas. And on top of it, it also gives me the feeling, even if I do computer work all all day long or licensing design and, and stuff for craft stuff, then, you know, it gives me the feeling I did something yeah. for myself and creative, right? You, you, you have to go. I, I think you have to go with that little accomplishment that makes you feel good. Yes. You know, it, it, it's, it's that little thing. And, it, and I'm glad you brought that other point up, though. It, it, it is that starting point. That was that was always something I, I told former students and I still tell mm -hmm. people now why I feel like I'm such an ambassador for sketchbooks. And anybody who works with me has heard me just talk about sketchbooks a million times because I, I'm always telling people that 
you know, if you mess up in the sketchbook, so what? It's, it's, you listen, if you want to show that to somebody, great, but you don't have to. It's your right. own personal little thing. And, and you should allow yourself that opportunity to mess up. But also, you know, the, the whole, the whole mythical thing of inspiration is, mm -hmm. is, it's an interesting thing to talk about. I mean, it's fun to talk about, uh, I, I think, as artists, but I, I do sometimes think it's this mythical thing mm -hmm. that, you know, like, where is inspiration going to strike from yeah. when, when really, you just need to start making a mark. Right. And usually I find that if I'm not in the mood to work or I'm procrastinating, if I start making marks in my sketchbook, something something happens, whether it's, you know, the way I moved my hand and I like that mark of the pen or there's a watercolor wash. And then I'm, I'm sort of reminded about the basic fundamentals that made mm. me love what I do anyhow and mm -hmm. it's and i find those little movements that i'm attracted to or i i assume i guess because i'm not a musician but it, it would be like a musician just hearing a note you know i see a color and i'm like oh oh that's nice oh okay yeah that's why i like this let's explore it more where some a musician would say ah yeah, right. yeah, yeah that, that resonates and then they you know they want to get into it I want to go um, quickly back before I let you go to yeah. uh, one thing you were talking about. You were going back to do oil and you haven't done it for a while. And I thought it was interesting because I just interviewed another friend of mine, John Duval, who is an amazing uh, watercolor artist. And okay. he has lately, he does this like amazing uh, urban landscape, a very free and often monochromatic. So it's a very interesting uh, how mm. he actually you're like, well, this is only two colors. How does he, you know, like, yeah. it's amazing. But um, he did a lot of acrylic uh, painting. He just got into acrylic paints. And he was like, I'm going to try that because I like the viscosity and it's thick. And, you mm -hmm. know, I want to I wanna try that. And I loved how he posted, like, a, a lot of stuff in his stories about how he was figuring it out. And, I mean, he was great, you know. He was yeah. He was doing his style, but with acrylic, and you could tell it was him. But yeah. he was really, because everyone else is like, oh, watercolors are so hard, you know, mm. and like struggling with it. And then now there's him being very used to watercolors, sure. saying, oh, this acrylics, I don't know, you know, like, what's yeah, going on here? Yeah, everything's got its own little little idiosyncrasy to it. I mean, I, I do, I do think watercolors are the, the hardest and un, most unforgiving thing. Um, I love them. Uh, they're, they're, they're very dear to me, but I think, I, I think that's because everyone has used watercolor. Every, every, um, almost everyone. It's the first thing we've ever used in grade school. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's the opposite of what I said before. You could walk around your neighborhood And you could say, are you, you know, what do you do for a living? And yeah, you, you would meet very few artists. But if you went around and said, have you ever used watercolor? Almost everybody would say, yeah, oh uh, yeah. Back, I was like, you know, I was in the second grade. I was you know, <laughs> six years old. And I think there's that, that feeling that because it was such a thing, you know, a thing little kids did in elementary school, like, oh, that's easy. Oh, it's simple. It's just this little, you know, and it's easy cleanup and it's easy set up and, and so on. And then we realize it's so unforgiving and you really, I feel like with watercolor, you really have to think about your approach and um, not to say that you couldn't go at it like I do with oil, but with oil, I, I mean, I'll just throw it on there and scrape it off and put it back on and scrape, you know, and it dries so slowly that you can, you can kind of dance with it a bit. And then, and then there's acrylic that's somewhere in the middle where it's going to dry fast and then I can layer over it. And, and I can't do that with oils. So oil could get kind of more muddy than mm -hmm. acrylic. It, it's all got these things you need to kind of navigate, I guess is the best word. And, and you can only do that through enough time spent right. doing it. And I, I feel like for me, I'm fortunate because working as a resident artist for an art materials company, it's my job to know mm -hmm. all the products. Um, as best as I can to know them all. There's a lot of them, but to know them all. So I'm constantly dabbling between those three main mediums. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've, you know, I've come to love all of them, even though I started as an oil painter, I've, I've really come to love them all equally for different reasons. And, and it depends upon my mood too, um, which, which, which media I might tackle. So oh, now I'm going I'm going to put you on a really tough spot right now because yeah, okay. so John, um, he had a studio in Jersey city. 
he had to take out like stuff from the studio to work at home, couldn't get sure. back. So let's say you have your studio in your backyard, basically. Yeah. It's a yes. wonderful uh, garage or shed. Yeah. Um, let's say you get onto real mean quarantine and you have 15 minutes to take out some stuff out of your shed mm. and move it into your home mm -hmm. where you have to make art for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. What are the materials you're going to grab? Yeah, I take gouache. I, okay. I don't take the oil, acrylic, or watercolor. I take gouache, which if, if anybody's watching, they don't know, um, uh, opaque watercolor. And I take that because um, for a few reasons. I have a little kit all ready to go with that. And um, with you know nine or ten colors, I can make a huge amount. I mean, you can do that with any media. You can, you can explore a limited palette. But uh, I think the thing about that is I can make them much more transparent and treat them like watercolors. I, because they're opaque, I can layer them. And, you know, you, depending on how I handle them, you might not know that they're not acrylic. You, you mm -hmm. might think they're acrylic, in, in, at least in, in photographic form. Um, so I can still have opaque passages as well. I can work fast with it. Um, I love gua I've, I've almost... Although I still use everything, you know, watercolor is like an everyday thing in my sketchbook. That That's definitely an everyday thing. Uh, but then most of the finished paintings that I've made in the past three to four years now have been uh, gouache. Wow. Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. Huh. Yeah. It, they, yeah, they have. And really it is that little kit. Like I can take it with me when I travel. Um, and I have, I have, I wish I had it right here. It's out in my studio and I'm inside right now. But it's a little... Um, Pashad box by the company Gorilla Painter, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and so it opens up. I, I have my little easel. It's got drawers and things that fold out for palettes. I've got all my colors, my brushes. I've got a few extra watercolor tubes in there, and and then it's got a mounting plate that can that can mount it to a um, a camera tripod. Oh, cool! So I like I can go anywhere with that thing so yeah and i like to travel so i'll go though i guess if i was on strict quarantine i wouldn't be i'm not, I'm not traveling right now but we're traveling your house <laughs> but i mean even the travel of i was just i was just thinking about this the other day there's a little creek down the street from my house so i was like oh i could go down there and kind of be away from everybody and i, I think i'll go down there and paint I, I was trying to think of like places the other day that i wanted to make a list of where i could go paint but i could be alone yeah but be outside um, right. because that's a difficult thing. If you paint plein air, uh, everybody <laughs> wants to come up. And I think even in a time with the social distancing now, I think people would forget that because they get so curious. Um, you know, they always, you know, you always get people come up with plein air painting and say, what do you tell you? You painting? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a spy. And I'm <laughs> yeah. just staying. No, I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm baking a cake. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the really obvious questions that you that you. I get. love that or, though. I think it's um. This that's. I think that is so cool about people who sketch or do plein air yeah. painting. Um, is that it? Usually, those people would never talk to you unless you have a puppy, right? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like the puppy magnet or the yeah, yeah, art yeah, that's magnet. True. That's true. There is some fundamental curiosity in people about, yeah. wow, what what are you doing? I usually don't see an artist working on their art, and true. I want to do what I want to see what you see, and then you know you stand right in front of it. And I want to know what you're doing here. I think that's pretty fascinating. Yeah, cool. oh, it is. And people lose their filter too. I think I think of the times that I've been out plein air painting, and um, yeah, people, you know, people say things like, "Are you any good?" <laughs> how, do you, how do you answer that? I, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to answer that without being a real wise guy about my <laughs> response. I'm like, no, I, I know I really suck at it. I'm just, I, but I'm glad you came along to you know to point out how good I am or not. That's why I'm still here. Yeah, I like, that, that's weird. That's cute. But, but, but I think I think part of that though, in all seriousness, is because people think of art for good reason. People think of artists as these isolated people because oftentimes we are we're isolated in our studios, and I think when they see somebody out painting. Um, there's the obvious questions like, you know, is, is this your career? Is this what, you know, is this what you always do? Is it a hobby? How long have you been working on this piece? Mm. They, they always mm. want to, there's something about time that plays a role. 
uh, uh, you know, about like, if, you know, like if you say like, you know, like, well, that's what people ask. Sorry, they'll they'll say like, how long have you been doing this? And my response is always like, like, like painting in general or like this one, right? Right, <laughs> right. You know, and then they, and then they're like, kind of like, oh, uh, well, actually both. But but they 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 get very thrilled if something is done in a in a short amount of mm. time. Um, I don't know. For some reason, that seems magical to people, and I I, and I guess. I guess it makes sense because I guess whatever you can't do well when somebody else can do it quickly or, or what looks like easily to you, it, it, I mean, I fall into that with music. I'm not a, you know, I've got a, I've got a guitar right here and I, I would not play it for you because I'm <laughs> terrible at it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at anyone who can hear and just sit in with people and play because I, I, you know, I'll strum that by myself once in a while. There's no way ever, ever, ever that I could just, you know, if musicians said, hey, sit in with us. I, I wouldn't have I'd be lost in two seconds. And it, that's magical to me that people can do that. Yes. So I so I see I, I see why people um, get interested. But it, it doesn't bother me to have anybody watch like that. I don't I don't mind that really. It, it can be kind of fun, I think, because it, it almost like uh, kind of like what I said before, almost with setting a time limit. You know, you 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 can't get too precious and too overly focused, which I can I can lead to getting too tight and, and making a lot of mistakes. And so when somebody's talking, I, I'm not thinking as much. And I think I do better when I'm not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? That's why yeah. why, uh, you know, I like to listen to music or podcasts or stuff when yeah. I do uh art because it kind of like takes the focus away from what i'm doing i guess yeah. in a way you, you can listen to a podcast and, and work i used to not be very good yeah. with that um it depends on what kind of podcast it is if it's okay. like good point yeah because I, I i love podcasts but i can't listen to a serious one and no. pay, I won't. I won't take it in. No. So if I'm gonna, if I, if I'm going to not listen to music and listen to a podcast while I'm working in a studio, then it has to be something like a, um, like a celebrity type. Like Conan O'Brien does right. one. It's called Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, and it's just <laughs> silly. It's just funny and silly, and I can do that because. But then other ones I want to listen to that are maybe on science or on self help or things yes. like that. I, I. I I have to pay attention. I have to. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I it's get like too distracted then, and I, yeah. I'm like, what did they? What? Where are we? I don't where, know what how they did said, we right? get? Yeah. So yeah, I listen yeah. to. So you do Conan and Friends, or? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what else I listen to. Yeah, it's just like celebrity things like that that are silly, you know, the comedians or or stuff like that. So I can yeah. do that. But yeah, but I but I love a lot of different podcasts, but like. You know, if it's like a crime one or a history one or, you know, anything that takes a little bit more brain power. I, I mean, I could have it on, but I just don't, I don't, I don't grasp it. Yeah. Uh, mine does, and for whatever reason, my mind can't do those two. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm more like, um, I'm more like, okay, music is my, the main thing. Sure. And then, um, yeah, like something, something that's a little bit like light. Um, I find it interesting that people, some people say they can't listen to music because that's distracting for them too. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that keeps me going. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine that. I love, yeah, no, love it. And, and it, and it is, it's, it's dependent upon, you know, the music can change depending upon my mood and, and like, if I do just want to get in there and work fast and try to just bang something out, then I'll, I'll have often faster paced yes. music. And, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, like, I like that. There's a rhythm that. Exactly. That, that helps you like, work. yeah. Like I, I, I like a lot of like alternative and punk music and stuff. And that's yeah, oh, like, yeah, 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 that's sure. like the fast thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I know. Like, like my yeah, my playlist is a lot of like late seventies punk and and, nice. and uh, new wave and and yeah, for sure. Yeah, that is so and, true. And, and it depends too. I don't feel like I don't know. I feel like watercolor is is more of a delicate thing. So I I feel like I tend to not listen to more hmm. hard rock or punk or things like that when I'm doing watercolor. It's something about the nature of it. Is that it. like what? classical Jimmy comes up? No, no, I don't really listen to, I, you know, I'd love to say that. It seems like artists always say that. 
I know I listen to classical music. I, I don't. I'm not, you know. I mean, I listen. I like a lot of different music. Um, I, there's a, a ton of music that I love. Um, I, you know, and it, it, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to classical music. It's just not my, I don't know. I feel like everybody always says that. And I wonder, I was like, are you saying that or do you really like it? <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. Are you just saying that because it sounds very cultured? Like, but I, like, no, I'll listen to a lot of bluegrass. I love bluegrass mm-hmm. music. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of fun stuff. That's fun. Tell me when we're getting out, what are like plans? Um, do you have an exhibition or anything where we can see your artwork at the yeah. end of the year, maybe, or whenever this is over? Yeah, it's so, it's so funny you say that. I, no, I don't. I actually don't at the moment. And I have a list sitting right over there of all these galleries and all these things I was doing and I need to, to do uh, that I was reaching out to and people who had reached out to me about shows and opportunities before all this stuff happened. And then everything just stopped um so th- th- that's actually stuff i'm planning on uh on doing and um and i have uh, another person in uh, canada i know who has a, a handmade book i made a, a handmade book uh, oh, yeah. project uh, i think i told you about a while ago and that that was supposed to be in the works again when when all this uh all this happened right now so um, most of my time right now is really focused on Uh, driving educational content for my job as the resident artist that we were talking about before. It's so much of of that stuff going on right now. Um, And and I find that's the interesting balance, too, that you have to, you know, how do you, I I hate all the stuff that needs to be done on the backside of being an artist Mm -hmm. um, to get your work out there and to show it and do it. So uh, I feel like most of the opportunities that have ever come my way have come from other people who have approached me Mm -hmm. uh, to have shows and to do things. Uh, So I'm really bad, I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible at it. But I'm very comfortable uh, finally at this point in my life also that um, like that question would have drove me nuts 10 years ago. It would, it would have, like, I always had to have something going on. And whatever I was doing, whatever show I was in, I, I had to have the next thing going on. Mm. I couldn't, I, I, it was just a driving thing. I couldn't, like, to me to say, like, oh, no, there's not a show coming up would have, would have in the back of my head been, oh, that's a failure. That's uh-huh. a Oh, yeah, to- like, totally. That would have messed me up. You know, that's, and I think that's why the more... The more that you live as, well, not just being an artist, but whatever it is you do, I think you, I, I hope anyway, you get more comfortable with yourself as you get older. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I feel like I'm much more comfortable with who I, who I am as an artist and how I judge success. That like that was a very important thing to me many, many years ago. Like, how do I, how do I judge success as an artist? Mm-hmm. And I look at it now and I'm like, well, I'm still doing it. That's, that's number one. It's, that, that's the only way I've ever made my living is in the arts, whether that's been through through teaching and selling, mm-hmm. working for materials, manufacturing, but it's always been, there's never been anything supplemental. And that's not to say for anybody who might view this that there's anything wrong with that. No, mm-hmm. not at all. I mean, I, I think, man, to, to, to me, somebody who, well, I don't know, goes and tends bar so that they can paint all day or they work a construction job or they work in, a, in some agency mm-hmm. somewhere or some doctor's office, whatever, Wow, that's 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 gutsy. That's like you're you're really grinding it out to do right. everything to support being an artist. And I feel like, like I said before, I feel very fortunate. I, I feel like I have a luxury of working mm. for a materials manufacturer. I don't worry about where you know where I get supplies or mm. or or you know even if I'm not doing my work, I'm being paid to paint uh, as, as part of my job for certain things. And, right. and that, could be, that could be even testing materials where I'm making paintings to test materials. So, you know, I sit back at the end of the day and I'm like, well, I'm being paid to paint. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, like I said, there's, there's the budget meeting, there's the marketing meeting, there's the, 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 the HR meeting, there's all this very, very business stuff. But then I'm getting paid to paint. I'm, I'm, I'm I feel good. <laughs> I feel, I feel good about that. And I have to remind you. You always have to remind yourself about those things. You know, you always have to do that because um, I've been in my job for I think 11 years now, and uh, and whenever there are those budget meetings, which get boring or anything else like that, 
I, I always think, yeah, but there's somebody else who would kill themselves to have the job I have. Yes. Um, and and to, to, to get the, you know, even when it's a meeting, half the time it's being called into a meeting to talk about creative things. And that's, that's phenomenal. It's so great to exercise that part of your brain. So I can even come away from a day where there hasn't been as much hands-on art, mm -hmm. but I feel like, whoa, it was, that was a creative day. That was like really brainstorming. Um, and that's, that's, that's a very exciting to me to be able to sit down with a group of people and just throw ideas out there and see what sticks. Yeah, I think that's very important to say. And um, that's a good reminder. I w listened to one of the podcasts that was called the happiness uh lab i think it was called oh yeah i know that yep. yeah and one uh, of the yeah. episodes was about like um comparison like oh. how why people are unhappy or why why are people who uh for example make the bronze medal are happier than the people I, who make the silver medal amazing story so if you ever like right i was mm. like oh my god what a mind-blowing reminder like because the person who has the bronze medal they're like, wow, I, I made it. I made it still. Okay. Like, if I'm, I, if I I'm good. If I got one place back, I wouldn't have got anything. Exactly. Yeah. And the yeah. one who got the silver is like, I could have been better. Could have been but I, better. But I get it, though. I 100% I get it because I, I, was, I was a competitive runner in high school. And then mm -hmm. later on in life, I ran marathons and things like that. And I always felt like the worst loss was the loss by, by that much. Yeah. Because if I had just pushed somewhere else, that would have been me. It's hard. Second place is hard. Yeah. T tenth place, that's not so hard to deal with. But second place is really hard. And you're, yeah, it takes perspective. So I, I and I'm not, for anybody who watches this, by all means, I can, I'm going to be super honest here. I'm not good at this. Uh, I, I can dwell on the lousy stuff and I can find myself, you know, I can be a, I can be a pretty bad pessimist, <laughs> uh, I, you know, but I, but I, I feel like most artists though, I, I, I can go from here to here, you know, it's, it's, it's not in the middle a lot. It's everything's going great and, you know, or everything down here. Um, and I think that's sort of what being an artist is like, you know, you, you have opportunities and things go well and you sell and this happens and, and this is going on. And then there's those lull, Points and I and I guess my my point in saying all that is I've I've gotten better mm -hmm. at accepting that there's those ebbs and flows to things. You know, and there is this there is another up uh, coming, and I think that's so important to know and to remember. It's just like normal life; like the, it's not always a downward no. uh, spiral. There is a better a better flow coming. Yeah. At some point, and, and there's, there's just no worse way to 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 I think squash your creativity than to compare yourself too mm -hmm. much because you just you can get in a hole of despair by doing that and mm -hmm. you have no idea you know the no I guess the way I can finish up and say that I, I I've always told my kids it, it, it's the same thing like if you look at everybody around you I said you know what I could go out today. And I could lease the most expensive car out there because the lease is a whole lot cheaper than buying it. And I could have all the best things. And everybody might say, wow, Jimmy's, whoa, he, he must be loaded. He's doing great. And then nobody knows that I've got thousands and thousands of dollars credit card debt. I, I'm, I'm house poor because, right. I, you know, you can make appearances look great. And I right. think that's the whole thing with social media and other stuff, too. You, anybody can make it look great. That's 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 not hard to do. Right. I mean, it's you only know the truth of what you're putting out there. So. Um, so I, I think you just at the end of the day, you have to sort of kind of define whatever success is for you. And, and be okay with that and also realize that that's going to change over time too. Right. You know, what you thought was important when you were 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever, yeah, that changes over time, uh, I think, and you have a better sense of, of who you are and, and, and what you want. That's so cool. Thank you so much. That was super interesting. As always, yeah. I enjoyed uh, talking yeah. with you, Jimmy. Um, yeah, follow talk, Jimmy so. on um, his Instagram feed, also on the... I always say it all. Uh, I say the abbreviation wrong. It's oh, the T F. <laughs> yes, say it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So the education program I run is the Fine Art Collective. So it's T F A C N A for North America. T F A C N A. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jimmy. See you soon. All right. Bye. -bye. <laughs>